This is the Alhambra Weekly Market Pulse. Joe Calhoun is here, and uh, this is the uh, our first report after Thanksgiving. And Joe, uh, I guess the big no big news was uh, Omicron on Friday. Yeah, Omicron. <laughs> not she, uh, not new, not moo, but Omicron. Yes, we're going to skip a few letters because we don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, you know. It, it's uh, like I, we were talking earlier. I think it's just an excuse. People wanted to take profits and Omicron gave them a good uh, excuse to do so. And so that's what they did. Uh, we're getting a little bit of a rebound this morning. I don't know how much of a follow through it's going to have. I suspect not a lot. Uh, but I don't think, you know, I mean, look, I, maybe Omicron is going to be, you know, the one that, I don't know, is deadly and awful and all those things. But I, I, I don't know. I, I can't get too worked up about it just yet. We'll wait and see how it comes out. But uh I don't know I, why everybody sells on such a knee jerk reaction. I have no idea other than they were wanting to sell anyway. Well, let's talk about the bigger picture. Uh, first two quarters of this year, uh, we had some rebound. That was pretty good. Third quarter, not so much because of uh, Delta, that variant. And we were looking like a pretty good rebound in the fourth quarter. Um, but like you said, at this point, we don't know what Omicron is going to do. Probably not a lot. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, we did get Chicago Fed National Activity Index for October, which rebounded to 0.76. That gives our uh, three-month average now is 0.21, so we're still growing above trend. Uh, how November and December come out, I guess, is something we won't, you know, don't know yet, but all the data we've gotten so far has been pretty positive. Uh, you know, we, we don't really pay attention to the data when we're trying to call, though, is the economy improving or not improving or whatever. Uh, we look at the bond market, and the bond market right now still is pretty negative. Uh, real rates are down to a minus uh, 1.07 on the 10-year tip. Uh, the 10-year, nominal 10-year closed Friday at 148. Now, we're back up to 155 today because fr Friday was probably an overreaction. Uh, but we'll see. We're still well below that 175 we hit back in the spring. So we still classify the, the existing economy as, as uh, weakening. Uh, because that's what the bond market tells us is going on. Uh, the other one is the yield curve is pretty, pretty flat, has flattened out too. It's not flat. I mean, you're sitting at about 1%, 10-2 uh, curve. Uh, it's not flat. It's not inverted. We're not on the verge of recession or anything like that. But a, a flatter curve does imply lower growth in the future. So we take those cues uh, seriously, and that's where we are. Um, I, I think fourth quarter is going to look better. Uh, but the market may be looking past the fourth quarter. Maybe the, the fourth quarter rebound has already been factored in. Uh, in fact, I would kind of guess that it maybe has. Uh, we're probably looking more about what happens next year. Market starting to price in first and second quarter. And I think there's a lot of uncertainty there. Well, you know, the other thing we don't put a lot of stock into is initial uh, economic reports, because those things usually get refined later on. Yeah, you know, I, I, I zeroed in on this one because it, it just struck me how, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a bear or a bull. I, you know, I take the economy as it comes and I take the market as it comes. Uh, but people have a view of the world and the bears, the economic bears all jumped all over this uh, export report last month. The goods trade report last month, not services, just the goods side had a big drop uh, in the export side, and it was all concentrated in industrial supplies. And I said at the time, I was like, you know, I'm not sure what that is uh, because it encompasses a bunch of things. And, you know, it was an advanced report, so you don't get into the details until later on. Well, we got the details. So the drop was concentrated in non-monetary gold. Yeah, I, I, you know, we're talking about jewelers here. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Did the jewelry industry collapse in one month? I don't think so. I, who knows why that dropped? I don't know. But anyway, the point is that it rebounded more than it had fallen. So we're back above where we were on exports. So everybody that was talking about, oh, well, this is a big clue about the global economy. Well, no, it's not. It wasn't a big clue about anything. It was just noise. And I, I think that's the thing that you got to be careful about, you get the one report that, that you think it means something and the next month, it, it doesn't mean anything at all. You, you can't be jerking around and, 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 and reacting uh, to every report that comes down the pike. You got to look at it as a trend uh, and look at it in, in its totality. And so, you know, the same thing with this, with this Omicron. I mean, look, we don't know anything about this yet. Everybody that sold on Friday, if they were really, really selling because of Omicron, what are they selling on? 
We don't have any idea how bad this thing is going to be. Hell, it could be good. We, we don't know. Uh, I, I've said many times, I think that, you know, we got to learn to live with this thing because it's not going away. And I think that's proven to be pretty true. Uh, but ultimately, it will evolve into something that our immune system can deal with. Um, maybe this is the one that helps us get there. I don't know. It might be a good thing. Maybe it's, maybe it's you know, very mild symptoms and it spreads very fast. That would be good. So if you were selling on Friday because you're worried about Omicron, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine why you would do that. Hey, what about that consumption report last week? I mean, it looked pretty good. Again, maybe this is an initial report. Also said disposable income was down 0.3%. Anything to get excited at, uh, over that? Well, the consumption side continues to be quite good. I mean, uh, you know, the consumption numbers are still running well above the trend that was in place prior to COVID. Uh, again, I think this is uh, something we, we've talked about many times, that people got income, they spent money. Uh, they got a lot of money out of uh, the COVID relief programs, uh, PPP and so forth. And, and they, they spent money on goods and services, goods primarily during the, the heart of the, of the crisis of the pandemic. Uh, now they're starting to spend a little bit more on services, but uh, those numbers are good. And I think they will stay good as long as income stays good. Now, nominal incomes are doing okay. Uh, I, you know, nominal income number was fine. It was real disposable income that was not that great. And this is not news. We know that's been true. There have been some big nominal increases in wages and salaries. That's what we saw in the, in the nominal income report. Uh, when you when you back out taxes and inflation, though, it's a, it's a negative number, uh, down 0.9 year over year. Uh, that's not so great, and that's one of the things that worries us about the economy is that uh, with inflation where it is, that that workers may be getting a nominal raise in pay, but they're not getting ahead. And uh, ultimately, we'll see what happens with that. I, I you know I think that really what's going to happen is that the wage gains are going to stay in place. And my guess is, as we've talked about many times, the inflation side will pull back uh, and then they'll get some real gains. But it, it, it's not exactly lined up in real time. So we have to wait and see how that goes. Um, I think it is interesting, though, too, when you look at the income report, I think there were a lot of people that were worried that with the end of uh, unemployment, the extended unemployment and some of the other emergency programs that you would be a, see a big drop off in income. You know what? It didn't happen. You did see a big drop off in unemployment and, and you know, transfer payments, uh, but it all got made up uh, by wage gains. It was primarily wages and salaries that were up very strongly in the last month. So, you know, yeah, it wasn't enough to beat inflation, but it, it was enough to offset that drop in, uh, in, the, in the emergency programs for COVID. So, like, I think things are okay there. I, I think we'd like to see inflation, the inflation numbers pull back, the PCE deflator pull back and and get some real income gains. And that would be a very, very positive thing, but it hasn't happened yet. So we wait to, to see these things happen. Last thing today, I saw that you had written that the dollar's in an uptrend, but does that mean anything? Are we still in that trading range we've been in for so long? Uh, yeah, look, we're still kind of a little above the midpoint there. We're at about 96 on the dollar index. Got up to almost 97 last week before Friday. I thought it was very interesting Friday with, with Omicron. You would have expected the dollar to go up in that situation as it did at the beginning of COVID, and it didn't. It went down. Uh, so I, I, that's why one of the reasons I think that maybe what happened on Friday really wasn't about Omicron. It was just about people taking profits and things. Uh, the dollar has run up kind of nicely from the 90 level to the 96, 97 level. I think you probably get some kind of pullback here, but the trend is up. Uh, but don't take that as a negative. Look, the, the rising trend in the dollar is a positive. We, we want a strong dollar. We don't want it to rise rapidly. That's where the problems come in. Rising or falling rapidly, that's where you end up with problems when you're in the currency markets. A gently rising dollar is not a bad thing. It's general deflation. Hey, that's what capitalism is. Uh, so I don't really see a problem with it. It does limit our choices somewhat when it comes to investments because foreign markets are not going to perform well in that environment. Uh, it makes it a, a kind of an uphill battle for commodities and gold, too. Uh, but U.S. stocks do well in that environment and U.S. bonds do well in that environment. So, you know, there's always a place to go. 